Okay, good all of you. Uh, Ma'am, can you go to the Skype document? Go to the Skype and uh, open the Excel document, ma'am. Open this data medium exchange file document. Open this data medium exchange file document. All of you, um, now, today we will going to discuss about the data medium exchange things, okay, which is very, very important in SAP. Uh, accounts payables and accounts receivables okay and at the same time all of you in data medium exchange why we need to use the data medium exchange data medium exchange is used to transfer the file which is having the payment information of the particular vendor to the particular bank okay then they are going to understand, okay, these are the payments that are to be paid to the particular vendor, okay. And with the help of transferring of uh, amounts to the particular vendor, okay, we can able to clear the amounts, due amounts. Okay, how? Now I will just give you the example. You have ordered one thing, okay. You have ordered one thing. What is that thing? washing machine, air conditioners, or uh, uh, electronic boots, items, anything, okay, so which are uh, relevant to your particular uh, uh, wants or anything, okay. So the thing is that you have ordered one thing, and you got that item, after the uh, receiving of the items and all, you have to pay the amount to the customer, sorry, vendor. Okay, how you are paying that amount to the vendor based on which information you are paying? So you do have one item. Okay, so that is why you do have the uh, one price. Okay, and uh, which is having the total amount of the particular product with the uh, service accesses and all. Definitely, you will pay that amount through UPI ID. You will pay that amount through. Uh, net banking systems and on to the particular vendor okay so how do you know whether this amount is to be paid to the particular vendor or not based on some information right whether it is sales information or whether it is a purchase information anything but when you are paying the amount to the particular vendor bank is giving you the access to pay that amount to the vendor what my point right all of you bank is giving you the access to pay the amount to the vendor that is the very important thing and at the same time in sap fis or real time projects and all okay a lot of purchasing invoices will be there a lot of sales invoices will be there okay i mean whatever the raw material that you have bought from the vendor okay you should pay the amount to the particular vendor right Based on which information, based on which file information you are paying the demand, you have huge invoices. Okay, so in this place, data medium exchange will come in into the picture. Okay, so you have to mention your payment file information and all. What are the data that you have? Okay, so to pay that amount to the particular vendor, you need to have the information of the vendor, the information of your bank, the information of the invoices and all, and in which file you will going to add it. 
again in which file you will going to add it that is very very important now. okay so header level is important transaction level is important okay transaction node levels are very very, very important in data medium exchange okay all of you and see don't get too much of confusion so there is a one point you are getting the raw material from the vendor and you need to pay that amount to the particular vendor. So based on which file information, based on the data medium exchange file information only, you will going to pay that amount to the particular vendor. That's the important point. OK. And when it comes to the data medium exchanges and all, when it comes to the uh, payment medium exchange files and all, you should assign the payment file information, I mean that data medium exchange file in your automatic payment program. The configuration is payment method in country. Okay, all of you. So then only uh, you can able to access the file, okay, from the uh, automatic payment program and at the same time you will uh, just send a file to the particular uh, uh, bank using your mails or using your gmail account or using your um, mnc outlook accounts and all and here they will have tools some tools will be there between bank and um, uh, organization client in all okay so some of the things will be there and they will share that file with that too okay we can call it as a zira tools okay so now in my company so we are using the zira tools okay so just uh, i mean search it for uh, search it in the google and you will going to find out a lot of things in the uh, google when it comes to the uh, relation of the uh, bank and uh, organizations or clients things okay so all of you when it comes to the header levels and on what are the nodes that you have what are the structure names that you have what are the lengths that you have what are the mapping processes that you have what are the node value that you have what are the levels what are the node orders that you have okay if it is a date that we can call it as a one node. And what is the structure field name? Okay, there will be a structure and there will be a field name. Okay, this is the F P A Y H is the structure. And the field name for the data is technical field names. For the data is L A U F D. And what is the length? Okay, date will be have some length, right? Okay. What is the length and what is the node value? Is it, is it uh, related to the date? Is it related to the company code? Is it related to the bank reference numbers? Anything. Okay. What are the levels that we're going to use? Okay. And what are the node orders? Okay. First, in your file, okay, data date should be in a first position and company code should be in a second position. And bank reference number should be in a third position. And how you are able to get all these details based on the node information that we give. Based on the transaction levels. Okay, what is the sequence node? What is the payment type? What is the house bank? And what is the bank ID, payer IFSC, vendor name, vendor bank account, vendor IFSC, currency, anything, all of you, based on the which structure field names, based on the these things. Okay, and what is the length and what is the mapping procedure? So length should be uh, different from one node to another node, all of you. Okay, so you make it a lot of uh, requirements and uh, for each and every requirement, you should change the length, you should change the uh, particular uh, mapping processes information. OK, so at the same time, what are the node values that you have? Is it related to the number? Is it related to the NEFT? Is it related to the um, uh, banks? Is it related to the numbers? Is it related to the uh, VARCAR? OK, and is it what is the data type? There will be a data types, all of you. OK, 
So data type should be there for the particular data nodes and mapping processes and levels and node members. Okay. Whatever the things that you have, okay, you can able to have number of things in your data medium exchange file based on the requirement. Okay, so this is the exact requirement that I have got uh, from my previous client, okay, Cargill client. Okay, so this is the exact information. So based on that information, I have prepared the file. Okay, so uh, now in my company, okay, I'm not working on the data medium exchange files and all. I'm just working on the asset accounting. Okay, asset accounting, accounts payables. Okay, I mean, one more consultant is there. So uh, he's working on the data medium exchange things and all. Okay, notes creations, notes levels creations, segment level reporting, and all. He's working on these things. And I'm working on master data governance. Okay, see, there will be a master data governance, master data management will be there. Okay. And in financials, master data management is very, very important. Master data governance is also very, very important. Basically, master data governance is uh, uh, mainly, uh, I think so, handled by the technical consultants. But the thing is that we should manage all these things with the master data governance. Okay. Um, basically, I work on the important things. Okay. And we do have another consultants and they will work on these things. I will also going to help uh, on all these things. Okay, that is not the issue. But the thing is that you should know the requirement. So when you know the requirement, not only you can able to give the node values, okay, transactional type level values, header, header level type values, and uh, 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 what we can say, item details, number of items that we are going to include. Okay. These things are mandatory and you should know the process. When you know the process, then only you can be able to do the configurations. Okay, can you come down, Mom? So we have uh, we have given each and everything. Okay, uh, header level type, transactional level types, and what is the trial level type? How many items that you are including, and what is the exact amount? Okay, we do have huge invoices, right? And how many um, number of items that you are including? And what is the exact amount? And uh, is that limit is particularly defined by the bank or any organized client organization of structures, things and all? So it will be decided by the client. Okay, at the same time, whatever the available amounts that you have in your bank, so based on that information only, they will transfer the money to the vendor. Okay, so again, whatever the amounts that the bank transfers to the particular uh, vendor, based on that information, banks will send the file. Okay, our banks will uh, send the statement to your particular mail ID or your organizational mail IDs and all, or else through tools only they can transfer the files. Okay, that, that statement we can call it as a electronic bank statement. Okay, all of you. See, uh, I will just give you the information. You have bought some material from the Amazon and you will pay the amount to the particular vendor. Okay, who is vendor? Amazon is the vendor. Okay, and after that, you will receive the statement. For each and every month, you will receive the statement. Okay, from your bank, I see a bank, access bank, or anything. How are you receiving the statement, whether it is a debit or credit? Okay, when you receive the money, it is credit. Okay, when you send, some, uh, send the money to the particular vendor, it's a debit balance. Based on which format types they are, you, I mean, they are sending the bank statements. Okay, so there will be a format types like MT940 formats, MT941 formats will be there. Okay, different types of formats will be there, all of you. So, so this is an exact cycle, okay, in our uh, SFP system. And at the same time, they will just ask you the theory part. Okay, please download this data medium exchange file theory parts and all. Then you can able to get each and every payment information.
and at the same time for your bank IDs or for your banking things and all or else uh, uh, electronic bank statements will be generated and that will be sent to your um, organization like this. In data medium exchange, uh, we create a file that contains payment instructions, right? What are those payment instructions? Okay, these are the payment instructions like header level data, transaction level data, and trial level data, and all. Okay, you send it to your bank, and the bank transfers the money from your account to a third party account. What are the third party account? And our account. Okay, alternatively, you can use DME to debit money from your customer's account. You can also use the DME. Okay, all of you. So to debit money from your customer record, or you can send a DME file with the tax data to the tax authorities also. Okay, so you are doing this much of uh, uh, payment information through all these things. Okay, and uh, whatever the things that you have, okay, this file will be sent to your tax authorities. Maybe you will going to get some exemptions. A data medium exchange is a data exchange file first you should remember so which is used to send in information of an enterprise to bank okay basically these fields uh, i mean these files contains uh, financial data which can be in a flat file or xml file formats okay so different file formats can be created for different countries and different banks based on their own norms okay so that is very very important in data medium exchange scripting is very very important all of you without having scripting we cannot do anything this is about the uh, basic introduction of the data medium exchange things and all and uh, when they ask about the theory theoretical explanation just give uh, whatever the information that you have observed from this video, okay, definitely they are going to understand your high level skills. Okay, see, all these things will be prepared by the, uh, uh, I think so, a lot of experienced people. Okay, but I got the opportunity to implement these things uh, for my previous clients. Okay, so that is why. I'm giving you the complete information on the uh, payments, complete payments. Okay, all of you.